So, sustainability. It's the talk of the town and more like talk of the world. It's the new buzzword, the hashtag word, and for others, it's a way of expressing their corporate responsibility. But in general, we can all agree that humanity has entered this phase where we have embraced this movement to put nature before luxury. At this point in time, it's important to pause and think about what sustainability means for the future generations. For students like me, who are now at the threshold of entering the adult society. Now, you might pose a question, well, your generation grew up with a lot of awareness programs, a lot of initiatives, so why don't you contribute more? And my responsibility would be immediate. I would ask you, how? Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Sai Abirami, and I'm here today to give you the student perspective on having a sustainable future. So to put things into perspective, let us look at the day of an average student. We spend time toggling between academics and entertainment, and with some of us interested in sports. Now, because of this, there has been an element of distance. This element of distance has been attempted to be covered by our education system. To give you an example, in kindergarten, we start learning about the beauty of nature. By the time we reach primary school, we have environmental sciences. And now in my senior and final year of schooling, I still study ecology. So we can see it as a detailed system that is meant to introduce the right concepts at the right age level. But there's still something missing, action. So my first time at real environmental action was when I was in fifth grade, like uh, the introducer said, 10 years old. But that is still eight years after I stepped into a school for the first time. So this experience included a march for a sustainable future, followed by a plantation drive. But I must once again mention that not all of my peers had this learning experience. I was one of the few students selected for this program. So later, in high school, when I proposed the start of an eco-club, I received three kind of responses. The first one, how will one teenager's contributions help us battle climate change? The second one, what about homework? The third one, lol. So the one thing that is common in these three responses, like I said, is the element of distance. We can see that my generation, even though we have grown up with all these awareness programs, there is still an element of distance that we experience when it comes to talking about sustainability, about climate action, about caring for the environment. And so, the story went on. The thing about Generation Z, or Gen Z, as we are commonly called, is our ability to adapt. Change comes to us easily because we grew up in the years when change was common. As the adults tell us, more changes happened in the past decade than they have experienced in all their lifetime. So yes, we are able to adapt. And the moment an idea gains momentum, there are more people willing to take that first step. I received like an overwhelming response asking me for ideas, asking me for questions, asking us what to do. And so, the club started out by speaking to people. And we did not speak to them about the ozone layer depletion. We did not speak about carbon emission. We spoke about lunch boxes, about the way we package our lunch every day, about using plastic and metal and aluminum foils and which one is the better option, because the way you pack your lunch every day makes a difference to this world. And when these measures started working, we realized one thing, climate action, sustainability, environmental concern. This cannot be considered a response anymore. It cannot be called a reaction to the side effects of pollution and industrialization. Children shouldn't grow up learning that not having a sustainable lifestyle means the end of the world comes closer. They should grow up learning that having a sustainable lifestyle is something we do simply because it's the right thing to do. 
Now the distance element we talked about. One way to cover this distance is to grade students for it. Now this might sound odd and quite contrary to the concept of climate action and sustainability. You might argue that this is not what it is about. But think of it this way. In our society, where success is determined by marks, when we first introduced sustainability as a way of grading students for this subject, and remember, not for environmental studies, but for environmental action, we're showing them that this is equally important as their academics. We're putting it on par with the subjects they have chosen for their future, which shows them how important this is for their future. Further, when we integrate it as a part of their lives, this becomes a habit more than as a subject that they will carry into whatever profession they take up at whatever period of time in their lives. So the ultimate point of this talk is that students of my generation want and need sustainability as an integral part of their lives. We learn our sciences through experiments in the lab. We learn our commerce through investigative surveys, projects, interviews. So let's do the same for the environment. To conclude, I must say that my generation envisions, not just wants, envisions sustainability as an integral part of their life. This is a point that has to be repeated and made a huge emphasis out of. Thank you.